Hi, I'm Miss Campbell, and I'm going to be reading Chapter 6 of Stella Diaz Has Something to Say. Chapter 6. Once a week, I leave my regular class for speech class. Speech is where I learn to speak properly. This means how all the letters and words are supposed to sound in English. At least that's what my teacher, Miss Thompson, says. Good morning, Stella, Miss Thompson says as I enter the room. Miss Thompson is seated at the center of a bean-shaped table in a small room. As usual, she's dressed like a ballet dance teacher in a black turtleneck and with her red hair pulled back in a bun. Good morning, Miss Thompson, I say as I hesitantly sit down across from her. How's your dad doing? Good, I say, looking down while tapping my fingers on the table. First, when I first started seeing Miss Thompson, she would come over to my apartment for after school lessons. This was when I was in kindergarten. Dad would be home during the lessons because mom worked. Miss Thompson got along really well with dad. He's very likable. He can always make people laugh, even if they can't quite understand what he says all the time. Dad speaks English worse than I do. He even talked to Miss Thompson about taking speech classes to improve his pronunciation, but it never happened. Back then, my parents had just divorced and Dad still lived in Chicago. He had a job, but it was only part-time at a karaoke store that his friend owned. When I asked him what he did there, he said that he kept inventory of the machines they sold. I don't know what that means, but I do know that when absolutely no one else was in the store, I sing along while he stared at the computer. He didn't work there long, though. Dad has never been good at keeping jobs. He lived in his own tiny apartment then. It was the size of my room with a kitchen. Is he still in Colorado? Yes, I say, grabbing my cheeks with my hands. They feel warm. A couple of years ago, Dad's brother, my tío, Carlos, gave Dad a job at his store in Colorado. Now Dad lives in his own house and goes skiing almost every day in winter. I know because he shows me pictures he takes with his professional camera. Is your dad visiting for the holidays? she asked. I shake my head, no. Too bad. It would be good for you to get together, she says. I sigh. I can never tell her what I really think. Like, I don't want my parents to get back together or that I don't really miss my dad. It would sound mean. But why should I? All they did was argue about secret grown-up things. What the grown-up things were about, I don't know. But I do know it made Mom sad, which is not good at all. Nick tells me he'll explain to me when I'm older. And I don't really miss Dad because he never keeps his promises. When he still lived in Chicago, he promised to teach me how to ride a bike, but he never did. He'd also forget to pick up Nick and me from school half the time, especially when he got a girlfriend. Walking home in the snow with a heavy backpack is never fun. Now, when it comes to my birthday, I just get free things from my uncle's store. If I ask my dad for anything, even a book, it never comes. See, I say, hoping a short answer will make the conversation end. I just wish she would stop asking so many questions. No Spanish right now, Stella. She always says when I accidentally say a word in Spanish. It's not like I even speak that much anyway, I muttered. What's that, Stella? Make sure to enunciate. She lifts up her hand to her mouth. Nothing, I say. I hope that was clear enough. Just then the other students, Janelle and Roman, walked into the room. Finally, a break for me. I scribble swirls on my notebook page as she asks them how they are doing. Roman talks for a while. He is all excited that his family is going back to Russia for the holidays. Roman is always jazzed to talk since he just graduated from ESL classes to regular classes. 
We begin today's lesson like we normally do with mouth exercises. We puff up our cheeks like puffer fish and follow that with deep breathing. That's to make sure we are speaking from our stomachs. Then we practice our TH and busy bees over and over. Since day one, Miss Thompson has been correcting my pronunciations using a bag full of flashcards that have pictures of clowns, bees, and other things. I remember it took a really long time for her to agree that I was saying three and tree differently. From there, we go through the alphabet, which isn't too bad, even though there are a couple of letters, like the vowels that sound different in Spanish. For good measure, she says, I do well, except for V and B. It's been there, it's been three years, and she still doesn't know how I say V and B. Despite how annoying it can be, speech class can also be a little escape. I get to leave my class and be in a small quiet room with just two other kids. It's especially good now since I keep turning Rojo around Stanley. The other day, he asked me what time it was. I was so surprised I spilled my bucket of colored pencils on the floor. After the alphabet, we practiced big words. Stella, can you say refrigerator? Miss Thompson asked. I nod and stare at her as I say refrigerator. Good, Stella. Maybe just a little louder next time? I groan. People are always telling me to speak up. I can never figure, really figure out why. It sounds loud in my head. Janelle, can you say refrigerator? Janelle says the word I don't recognize. At least I sound better than her, I think. Then I feel a little bad. Janelle gets made fun of by some of the kids at school. She has a lisp which makes everything she says hard to understand. She always sounds like she's eating peanut butter, a peanut butter sandwich. Despite everything, Janelle is still really friendly and kind. I always try to be extra nice to her in speech and wave to her at recess. I look up at the clock. Only 30 minutes left. Good. I'm really excited to get back to class today. We're going to play math games to see who can add, subtract, and multiply the fastest. I'm really good at it, and it's the only time I like Miss Bell calling me in front of the class. I love showing people that I'm smart whenever I can. Numbers are also easy to say, not like letters. Whenever I hear someone spell a word out loud, my brain goes weird. It slows down like the gears on a rusty bike. I worry people think I look stupid, which I hate. After we practice other big words like conditioner and computer, Miss Thompson sends us back to class. Before you go, here's a treat for, you for working so hard. Miss Thompson gives us stickers when we do a good job, and they are excellent stickers. Sometimes, if we do really well, she even has the ones that you can scratch and sniff. I have a binder filled with them at home. When I look at our think when I look at or think of my binder, I feel a little better about Miss Thompson. Each sticker shows how much I I've improved my speech all because of her. I get two scratch and sniff stickers today, a strawberry one and a grape one for my collection. Thank you, Miss Thompson, I say, looking at her in the eyes. You're welcome, my dear, she says, looking back. I smell my stickers as I leave the room. I race back from speech and find Miss Bell standing in front of the class. Everyone is in a new seat. She mixes us around when we're playing math games so we can go against new students. Perfect timing, Stella. We're about to start, she points to the empty, an empty chair. Why don't you take a seat at the table with Jessica Anderson and Ben Shaw? I walk over to the table and try to sit down, but Jessica won't move over. I clear my throat, hoping she'll take the hint. I want to say something to Jessica, but I'm afraid she'll say something mean. Ben finally moves over to make space for me. I like Ben. He's so easygoing. He just likes making everyone laugh. Miss Bell looks at Stanley and says, Now, Stanley, this is your first time, so just try to do your best. Everyone else, you know the drill. Stanley says, Yes, ma'am. Miss Bell laughs 
What good manners you have, Stanley. There's a gold whistle around Miss Bell's neck that she blows to start each round. At the beginning of each round, she turns over a card with a math problem. Miss Bell says, we're playing spelling bee style. I'll have to take her word for it since I've never done a spelling bee before. Whoever gets the answer right goes to the next round until there are only two players left. The questions start really easy, like 2 plus 2 equals 4, but they get way harder toward the end. Ready? Miss Bell blows the whistle. A few kids get knocked out right away, but I get all the answers correct. I feel proud that everyone can see that I'm smart. Before I know it, I'm in the last round, and it's me, Michelle, and Stanley. I'm stunned. Michelle is always good at math, but Stanley? I didn't expect to be this good at math. As Michelle sits down, I start to feel a little nervous. It's now Stanley Mason with me in the last round. Everyone is cheering for Stanley. Go, Stanley, Jessica says. Miss Bell grabs the flashcard and asks us if we're ready. I nod my head yes. Focus, I say to myself. Stanley grins at me and says, I'm ready. I feel Roha again and turn my head to Miss Bell. She flips the card. It's four times seven. 28, I think, but I can't talk. I'm trying so hard to get the words out, but my mouth is too dry. I can't even try puffing up my cheeks like we do in speech class, but nothing is working. My mouth only feels drier. Then I hear Stanley pipe up. 28! Miss Bell says, correct, you're the winner, Stanley. Way to go, Stanley, the class cheers. I just cover my Roja face with my hands. This is a new low. I couldn't even say numbers today.